Tomato variety Sun Gold F1 50 seed I bought it from the CN set last year My second year I'm using it now And now I'm going to plant them individually in these uh, uh, Modules Pots So They will be ready for when I want to use them To plant them in the polytunnel that is inside the polyton. Yeah. So, tomato sun gold F1. 50 seed cost me, I think, about 10 pounds. Considering that this is the best tomato in the world, that's a good bargain. The seeds look like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 seeds I have here. Uh, I may go and buy again more of this for this season. That's from last year's. So only 13 pots can be done right now. Last year I planted about, I think, 30, 34 of this. I gave a few also to other people. So. Okay, now I've planted in these three rows by four, so that is 12, and the 13th ones is here. I will go now bring some water and water them. Now I'm watering this, and I fill it to a certain level. The water gradually rises up, and the seed will have the water they need. And that's it. Tomato variety Sun Gold F1, the best tomato ever. I have a video about this and uh, I will pr probably put the link below here, just anybody who wants to see how it tastes. Uh, when you have tomatoes, you will end up definitely with a lot of uh, side shoots like these ones. The side shoots uh, should be removed if you want to grow your plant tall, as it is called in a cordon shape. So one stem, it means tall. But if you cut these side shoots, the plants will grow faster, taller, and uh, you will not end up with a cramped space and the lack of ventilation in your tomato plants. So what you will do is to pinch them out. Pinch them out with just with your nail, just cut them short. The good thing is that these pinched out parts uh, are vigorous. You can, before they get dry, you can just plant them, put them in the, uh, in compost in a little pot you will have they will root out and then you will end up with a lovely uh, clone of the original plant tomato plants that you have so i'm doing this with the uh, uh, with my f1 uh, sun gold tomatoes and that way i will have free plants that's the best way to have free plants actually it's faster than growing them from the seed. So I'm doing it now. Um, okay, I had some side shoots of the... Uh, from the um, tomato sun gold F1. I'm just now trying to clone them. I use the side shoots, stick them into the compost. And uh, if I had a hormone, I would use it, but I couldn't find my hormone rooting hormone I mean so that's it that's what I'm doing I just take them cut the lower leaves actually whatever injury you cause at this stage that's really good because the plant tries to heal it and the hormones will be secreted to actually function the process of healing to, to do that so I'm doing uh, another one so this one also I've done it last year and it really was good I gave the plants to other people because I uh, had enough and I reached that stage. But look, I have now three healthy looking plants. Hopefully, God willing, they will catch, uh, they will take and uh, we will have uh, uh, good tomato plants that can go to the polytunnel. At the moment, uh, I am waiting for more seedlings to, to grow the beyond the three leaf stage. So after that, uh, they will be planted. I've done almost all the polytunnel, just one side of it 
uh, probably about 12 more I can plant. Um, okay, I've now started to put the tomatoes, additional ones, into the soil. I've already done a few in, in one month ago in this soil. They're growing and they have now in flower. But these ones are new ones I'm doing them in the polytunnel. And uh, I've watered them, I dig a hole, I've watered them, full up the hole with the water, so pad it in pool. pool. And then, mm, that's it, I cover it with soil. The soccer hose with the timer will uh, fit them gradually. Just come occasionally to to see how they are doing. I remove any wheat that I see, like now what I'm seeing here, wheat, some wheat. Um, the good thing is that in this system, the water is where you need. Always you have to keep the water when it is needed, not where uh, uh, watering all the plant, or even worse than that, watering the leaves and the foliage of the plant. That is crazy. Don't do that. Water should go to where the plant needs it, and that is the roots. So when you keep the near the plant's roots moist, that's it, they go for it and they gradually build up their their energy. And uh, of course, the, this way they go also strong, develop a strong root systems. What will happen then is that uh, the slug will be discouraged because the soil, look, this lovely soil, lovely manure that I put uh, one month ago, and this is the fresh one I put the other day, yesterday. Uh, look, I found slug. Egg. It gets dry for them, so practically they will not live here, and they will not be able to thrive here. That's 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 the philosophy. So uh, now I'm going to water them, and then that's it. It's done. I will leave them on their own. What I will do later, okay. I will show this is a sun gold F1 tomato I planted. When you put your potato uh, tomatoes in the soil, after a while you need that. This uh, you see that if it is a cordon and long one, that one is not a one of those bushy ones. So you, they give suckers, they're, they're called side shoots. Uh, you have to remove them because they will take you in the energy. And uh, usually the, the tomatoes there are not very, they, they don't develop as fast as these ones, which are in the main truss. So, and also it makes your plant look bushy. They have a tendency to go bushy. We don't want that because we want to, they go tall because we have a limited space, 60 centimeter between each plant. So. They should really go tall, high, and give the tomatoes in a in a cordon way. So what you have to do is to pinch out this thing, and that process is called pinching out. So all the suckers can be pinched out. If you like, you can plant them separately in a in a pot, and they will give you again because this practically is cloning. So what you will do is uh, you you are cloning this. So I may do a few of these because these are sun gold. I love them, and uh, see how how they will do. They are hybrid. Yeah. It's difficult to grow from seed and toss, it takes time. So I can pinch this now. I'm pinching all the side shoots. And I'm collecting them as a free plant. So that side shoot for this uh, tomato plant is done. And as you see, so already has one terrace, the second terrace, terrace means the, the level of the foot, the storage, the, the, every level of the foot is called the terrace in the tomatoes. So, and you have to keep just on the top of the weeds, there is a few weeds here from the previous, I planted these things one month ago, so it has been a while that they are here, and I didn't weed them really, but this you see because the soil is so dry, and I water it with this watering system automatically every day, about a, one hour now because it's now hot. Um, the the soil is dry, but the plants are enjoying it, so they have enough water. Uh, and that's it. Pinching out the side shoots for free plants. And these are the free plants that I have now. I, I can just it's a hybrid. It's a sun gold F1. F1 means the fairly one or four, whatever. It means the second generation, first generation. Sorry. And uh, that means is a hybrid. I can I can plant it separately without the need for the seed. I plant it in a pot. Then when they're big enough, I just put them into. The... Hallelujah! We have flowers on the tomato in the polytunnel. These are the tomatoes, sun gold F1, and I'm looking forward for that. Look at this one again, flowering.
and those are the cucumbers. We will make a lovely salad, God willing, with these ones. They are lovely. Look at this. Beside the beautiful uh, garlic. Let me go deep into one of these flowers. <coughs> Tomato flowers. And look at there, we have the larvae of the, guess what, ladybird. Oh, this allotment is blessed. That's great. They will eat their feet for us. The already program started. Lovely. This is June 15, yeah, sorry, May 15, 2015. 15, 5, 15. Or 5, 15, 15. As you say in America. And look at this. Lovely. The first flower. First tomato fruits of the 2015. This is the variety Sun Gold F1 is a hybrid. This is the tastiest tomato in my opinion in the world. I love it. And now it is in fruit. Oh, I'm waiting for tasting this. It's the most beautiful. That is in the polytunnel. And this is the first truss. The second truss is this. Uh, this variety, Susan, is called the uh, Indigo Rose. I think I saw a few ones which are ready to harvest here. I think this one. That's red. It's come red on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So, Indigo Rose. I think this one is maybe. Yes, this one's gone red. And uh, there's one thing that the viewers should pay note. Uh -huh. Is that you can see we don't have any red tomatoes. Uh -huh. And there's a reason for that. I will, I, we will have, but not yet. because We've got not some, but we noticed through experience that these golden tomatoes are more resistant to blight. Mm. When our polytunnel got infected with blight, we noticed that these didn't. Mm. They didn't. The other ones we had to pull up, these agree. ones were still growing. So they do have some resistance. I'm not saying total, but in our experience... And also they, they're sweeter, it seems They're to me. sweeter, they're just as easy to grow. And the sites are small so they don't fall off the vine. They don't drop off. Mm -hmm. Very few do. They, you can pick them. I don't do like the shops and just pick the whole vine together. Yeah, you pick. That is actually a, it's, it's very unusual that they can pick the whole tomato vine when actually they don't come at the same time. How they do? What trick they play um, in that? They're selectively grown for that, and they're not grown in normal. Look, you're treading on a tomato. Oh, sorry. And they're not grown. Naturally, they grow in just suspended and the roots dangled in nutrients and water. They don't have the, the environment, the natural environment. And of course, the ones on the um, top of the vine are mm -hmm. always riper than the ones on the bottom. So when you do buy vine tomatoes, you'll find that the ones on the top will be more ripe and they'll go rotten sooner. Okay. Thank you, Susan. You see, this is a different variety. It's kind of pear-shaped, plum-shaped something, like a plum. Well, that's new to me because yet. I thought these were peppers, which they are, 
And this no, no, one, that's not pepper. That's a pepper. Is that a tomato? That's a tomato. Well, it's right. <laughs> no, I did. I think that fell, was a tomato. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. And another thing that I can I point out to the viewers. I think that is not very ripe, but anyway. When tomatoes are, are overripe, they don't go rotten. They don't go mouldy. They don't mould. They don't rot like the shop port ones. They split like this. Uh -huh. That is a ripe tomato. It split. That's the first sign that they are on the turn. So here we go. Oh, you're eating it. I've given it a Viking's funeral. <laughs> the Viking's funeral. <laughs> okay, um, I have to. Okay, you continue. You continue to harvest. I will just follow you. <laughs> this side, uh, uh, I, no, I don't think this side is, are yet ready yet. No, these no, are, no, 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 these no. Are. These are. Yeah, not. These are. Yeah. Yes, you are they picking the unripe them. one. They're because these are, uh, let me tell you why, why. Because I planted them after those ones. So these ones are behind in the I season. The so you have to start on that side. That uh, hanky does that. It's the ants helping me. Oh, okay. another one. He said they weren't right. No, no, no. They're, they're not right because this I planted them. Right. Look that side. It's split. Here, I can tell you these ones are ripe. Those, yeah, there is a one year orange one there, which is ripe. Oh, yeah. Not there, here, here, here in, in front of your feet. He's like this when He's I'm in front driving. of your feet. Where? Uh-huh. He's like this when I'm driving in the car. Okay, here. He's a backseat driver and a backseat gardener. <laughs> You're just uh, being, trying to be cheeky now. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> but I'm sure we're not the only ones. You are enjoying the fruit of my labor. I certainly am. <laughs> Look. Another one that That's needs lovely. to be disposed of. Oh, give it to no, me, disposed oh, of. I will dispose see? it in my stomach. He took the bread out of my mouth. Okay. Let's have a look down here. These are falling. Oh, there's one. Yeah, I see falling it. There. Yeah. There's a few under your hand just there. Yeah. I know, I see them here. No, no, those ones are not ready yet. Yeah. They are not orange. This is an orange one, look. Um, I think these ones can stay a little bit longer. But I think this side has a lot more to offer. Do you need a pony? No, I need another pony. Oh, look. One each. We can't waste them, they okay, don't... Give it to um, me because my hand is all busy. Me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lovely. Okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look what I found. Oh, blueberry. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, come on. I put that off. Okay. I'm now stopping the top of the plants to don't let them grow beyond a certain point. I may have some side shoots let it grow, but uh, at this moment I don't want the tops. Especially since they hit the a little wet roof of the I don't like that, they may get blight. Yeah, I'm stopping the plant. I may let a few side shoots just to grow here and there. So another alternative coming up. So because I've stopped this at, the, at this level of the height, it's about two meters. But the side shoot will, will have the prospect of fruiting again. So I will keep them. They say in the book that don't do it. But uh, I want to give it a go this year, just to see how, how is the effect. I 
found some things. Oh, here. I can point it to you here. Oh, yeah, look. Here. Oh, wow, look. Here. Oh, here, look. Look at this. Another broken one. These six, right? Okay. Because I'm going to eat mine. Oh, yummy. Yeah, they're all broken. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're all broken. Now there's a reason why they ripen on the top of the vine first. And it doesn't need a rocket scientist to work that one out. It's simply because the nutrients go to the ones that are first. Mm -hmm. All the nutrients and everything, actually, yeah. the water. The older ones. Yeah. So they grow first and then, and this is different to the the um, cultivated ones and mark you know the big producers these don't have artificial sunlight they don't have lamps that turn on and off they don't have all this irrigation and uh, no soil thing this thing they use now technology so I think you've got more osmosis through the the uh, cells you've got this osmosis going on uh, extracellularly and, and you know, that side is full you're picking the wrong ones and um, they're not right yeah, okay. these ones. they're greenish yet if you go that side you will find right well, ones whereas here there. it's more natural just pick the ripe ones you don't need to pick the unripe ones yeah, it's, yeah. See, so it's the more, ones which are orange are well, ripe the ones which are orange the other ones are not as sweet so I've just, I've them. been trying to explain to the viewers why this happens. Yeah, I know. Thank you for the information. And uh, you've got natural yeah. rhythm. Pick this. These are the ones which are so easy when they're ripe. Just break from this joint. I think we need another panel. Okay, open this over to it there. There's enough broken there. Now. For the lady viewers, who like to pick their Gurdish figures, tomatoes are very low in calories. An average sized tomato, which are the average sized red ones that you buy in the shop, are never about 20 calories. And these little ones would only have 10, 5, 10 calories. And they're very nutritious. So you can eat. A hell of a lot. Yeah, if you're craving for eating. Yeah, I love tomatoes. I'm in tomato heaven here. That one is not right. Too late. The green. Don't pick the green ones. There is one behind you which is orange. Don't Leave them, them when they are ripe. ripe because then no, they no. They, they, if they're ripe, they're better. Even if they're splitting, they taste better. They're sweeter. But then you have to eat them quicker. That's all right. Ripen, then. Right. I don't like green ones because. They are a little bit acidic. They are a little bit tan also. Tan in them is too high. This one is. And surprisingly, these trees are, I'm showing here, some of them are from seeds. But some of them are from the... I took uh, side shoots from here, these plants. I put them in a pot and planted them as a new plant. So practically I did a cloning. That was wonderful. Oh, that is split, this one. Yes, well, you can have it. Oh. You can. You'll try. Thank you. I've just seen um, a vine that's right into it over there on this I side. see a vine there, huh? Yeah. That is right. Okay, when you are close to them, it's difficult to see. Yeah, you, sometimes you have to view them at different angles. I remember Rick Van Man, whenever he was entering in summer, his polytunnel, he had to shake the plastic because there were rain of <laughs> condensation.
coming down. Uh, oh, he, he didn't actually bought the best. The best was for him to get the plastic, which is the anti-condensation. I got that one and I'm really happy with what I did. But that means I will not have a problem like that. There is one here oh, which is yes. ripe. I thought maybe that might be a bit too green for you. No, that one was all right. This one okay, is already put that in there. ripe. Okay. okay. And when you do leave the slightly green ones, you will have something to pick next day. So it's good in a way. Because you will eat the ones that you already have and then the ones that will come next day are ready for you. You will have all the time fresh. Is this tomato heaven? Well, tomato. it's not tomato. I mean, in the past, such a thing would be uh, only in the uh, means of very rich people to have a, uh, as they called it, a greenhouse or whatever, glass house, or we can call this plastic house, for their kitchen garden. We have been into Walmer Castle in the Dover and I was really impressed how the, everything was there. Of course Darwin House has such a thing also, but anyway, Walmer Castle, beautiful place with a lovely kitchen garden. Oh, I found one here. Oh, one tomato here. A red one? Yeah. Aha. I think this yeah. is a different variety. Would be, yeah, it's red. Uh, show me, show me again. Different colour. And the leaves look slightly different. Yeah, the leaves are a bit smaller. They do, they look slightly different, so... Um... Right then. And look at the shape of the wine. The wine is like a Y, letter Y. Oh, the sign, symbol of peace. This is a hippie tree, <laughs> hippie oh, yeah, tomato. Yeah. Look, it sounds flowers. like that. Is one like that coming down, then going like that? The only thing is there is circle. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it reminds me of the 1970s. Show me how many you have now. Okay, one punnet. I've got one punnet. There's a couple split, but we'll eat them straight away tonight. So they won't go rotten. I mean, they stay in the fridge a couple of days if they split. It's just a clean split. They, uh, and two. Not... So we've three. got. Oh, okay. We've got. Two punnets of the sun gold and uh, another variety yeah, if you don't know the red Two punnets of the sun gold. We've got uh, the firecracker fire and we've got this really little mixture. Of we've the got those ones. Indigo rose. The indigo rose. The fi um, That's one probably sun marzan this is, or marzan. Or this is the one we don't know. It looks yeah, like a red pepper. Plum. It's the size of a small pepper. <laughs> I thought he was growing peppers in here. Oh, we have pepper. And those, uh, and that's my tea for tonight. Mm. My Sunday salad. I will be having. Uh, this is um, tomato variety F Sun Gold F1. Now I'm going to taste one of these. 
This is the way it looks. Now I'm going to taste it. Mmm. I cannot believe it. <laughs> it's not a tomato. It's plum. It tastes like plum. It's sweet, slightly sour, and it's lovely. I'm going to taste another one of this one, which has a split in it. It has cracked, as you see. Now taste now. Oh, it's so sweet. It's not a tomato, as I say. It's not a tomato. It's the best tomato in the world. It tastes like a proper plum should taste. Oh my God. That's a good tomato. Today is the Thursday, 29th of the October, 2015. This is the uh, a tomato that is yellow. I'm inside the polytunnel. And uh, this was not ripe up to now. 29th of October, remember, this is now quite late in the season. But yet we have tomato in the polytunnel getting ready for ripening the harvesting. I'm taking a few of these actually for just today, just to beautify our dinner plate. Hmm. Can be the variety's name is Golden Sun Sunset or something like that. Golden Sunshine or Sunrise. I forgot. I bought it, I think, from the CN Seeds. Uh, so now we will see how it is. Um, I'm going to taste actually one now right away, just to describe it for you. Mmm, quite juicy, sweet. There was no acid in this. Mm. I can describe it as sweet to bland. It's different, it gives different color. The size of it is like a big uh, olive. Quite shapely and beautiful. Nice addition to the dinner plate. Russian black yes. tomatoes. This is the second year I'm growing this. And uh, yeah, this is nice tom uh, tomato. It's quite large for its size. It has varieties that are also very small. This larger one. And uh, you get a size. I'm looking forward for a good crop out of this. This is the Russian black tomato. Two of them are ready now, so we are going to harvest it now. Susan, can you please do that? That's huge. <laughs> oh, we have to eat that. Uh, it looks, the look of it looks as if it is can be a little bit smoky. I don't know, it's because we expect something like that to be smoky. It's massive. Do you want to harvest the other one? Or... I think that one has suffered a little bit from drought. Yeah, not bad. New variety, orcata. New variety. 
the seed I bought from sea and seed. Today is the 11th of the August and I'm in the polytunnel looking at the uh, indigo rose tomato. There's a black or blackish red tomato. I was waiting a long time to see if uh, any of them will be ripened and how it will look. And yesterday I noticed that uh, yeah, one of them actually is looking as if it's ripe. This one, interestingly, the one under it has a mutation. Look, it reminds me of a satellite of the planet Saturn called Iapetus. Iapetus has one hemisphere, it's a bit dark. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you can read about that in the Space Odyssey 2001. <laughs> oh, look at this. This is now almost ready. How I say that? Because I bought this plant. It's part of the Soton's James Bond uh, uh, range. Bought it from the Burston Nursery. And this is the way it should look when it is ripe. And compare this picture. Is what you see here. We are now in the polytunnel. This is today is the twenty eighth of the August. Uh, Susan, what you thought these are? <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were peppers. <laughs> And I have always thought they were peppers, <laughs> so that's why I didn't harvest them with the tomatoes. Well, where is the plant that you picked this? Just down here. Oh, this is one of those, you know, where they about the seeds of this? Oh. The seeds are from the <laughs> 19 p <amp> shop. <laughs> I had them for probably four, five, no, no, four, three, three years ago, three years ago. <laughs> it's amazing, look at this. Look at how beautiful they are. And there's so many still on the branch, on the vine. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and for the first time, I'm doing an experiment this year. I'm letting some side shoots to come up from the lower parts of the plant. So to see if, if during the colder season, because it's, a, it's at the polytunnel, is it possible to have some crop continue even to, to the cold time, cold season? Uh, we will see if this plant works. I think the name of this variety is called Marzano or San Marzano or something like that anyway. Or plum or pear tomato. I'm not sure. But that's it. Uh, today is the Friday, uh, 28th of August 2015. And uh, this is the harvest from the tomatoes and cucumbers and a little bit of raspberry, but raspberries are so much we just can we just not interested to take all that. Just a little bit is enough. And a fig of course. Uh, from the polytunnel and out of the polytunnel. The cucumbers and the uh, tomatoes are from the polytunnel. And uh, yeah, I'm not bad. Uh, different varieties actually look. Indigo rose, uh, the one is here, is the firecracker. This is, I think, some marzano or plum tomato or something like that. Then, uh, of course, uh, my favorite, the best tomato in the world, the sun gold F1, which you can see a lot more here. Of course, different varieties of the cucumber, Hana F1, and others, and uh, yeah, the other one, yeah, Passandra. And, of course, some giant raspberries. I'm really telling you these are giant. They're the size of a strawberry. And I think.
Okay, I just left my wife for half an hour and she picked all these uh, tomatoes from the Politano. Probably this is about yeah, four kilos of tomato. And uh, I can say that every little pound, at least uh, half of this will be in a supermarket if you buy it. Not as full as deep or as deep as this. And that is three pound there. So this is about five pound and the rest of it. Probably I, I'm talking about uh, 15 pound of tomato here value wise and this is I don't know nth time that I'm collecting these tomatoes from the polytano uh, probably up to now I've collected about 100 pounds of tomato from the polytano and given also to friends and uh, uh, anybody who, who was interested besides that I got a lot of side shoots from them and just planted them as new plants cloning them so I paid about I think five or six or seven pounds for some gold left one tomato, these little ones, and uh, three pounds for this tomato as a plant, the rest of it was seed. So it's well paid for it already, and yet the Politano has things to go on. So this is really good value for money, you know, even buying the expensive uh, F1 uh, seeds from CN seeds, for example, these are from CN seeds, about F1, some gold F1. They are really sweet the plums of the tomatoes i'm telling you you have to try to know what what i mean and yet it is value for money 100 pound of tomato already have collected with all these things and yet it is continuing god willing and they're really good value for money great mm. yeah, also flower mm, beautiful smelly the tasting the tomato variety golden sunrise And we ask you how you feel. How it tastes? Can you describe sweet. it? Sweet. Lovely. S sweet. Mm. Oh. What about this one? Oh, that's the stew pies. You want to taste it also, please? The red stew pies. Mm. Lovely. Is it sweeter or not sweet or acidic? Um, it's not sweet as the other one. Oh, the red is... one is not as sweet as the yeah, golden sunrise. Yeah, this one's sunrise. more savory, but savory. it really is a lovely, lovely flavor. Both of them are good. Yeah, that's brilliant. So, tomato varieties. Golden sunrise to the right. And stew pies to the left. We just uh, one hour ago arrived from the allotment. Always some tomatoes. I was just wanted. I just wanted to talk about this. Um, this is a tomato that we harvested. Some old F1. Uh, <laughs> if you want to know what is a, if you make a jam into a soup, how it will look. That is it. What we did was just uh, putting uh, the tomatoes with this slightly, uh, a little bit of the olive oil just a tiny bit just to stop them burning in a pan in a frying pan then uh, put in the heat on and uh, on the oven on the oven and then it just boils on its own juice and the result is this delicious soup like uh, food is it's not just soup I'm telling you some gold F1 it is without any added sugar it is a jam if you marry a jam to a soup, that is this food. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I love it. That's the rest of the food we are eating. Okay. The frost season has started. Yesterday we, we went and harvested the rest of our uh, tomatoes from Polisano. Whatever was here... Whatever was here, uh, we put it... Uh, in a, it was mushy almost a little bit, uh, very soft because of the frost. Uh, we boiled it, mixed it with a little bit of onion and just that. And then now it is cooling down. We put it in this uh, kilner jar to keep it for immediate use so we can use it whenever we want. I'm telling you this is yummy with a little bit of onion. Oh, that's, we, we just boiled it with a little bit of onion. It's really beautiful. Yeah, you can add anything you like. You can add uh, herbs, greens. Uh, I mean, basil and uh, all kind of things that you like, dried ones, 
or fresh. You can add even garlic. Garlic is the ingredient that is has in most of the processed food. It gives them the uh, the nice smell. Otherwise, meaty, especially meaty foods, processed meats are really horrible smelling. Without the garlic, they cannot be sold even. So, yeah, good use of the uh, our tomato. These are all the beautiful. Uh, yeah, what is that called? I forgot that. <laughs> or old tomato. <laughs> yeah. That sweet tomato that I have. Anyway. And, uh, yeah, we'll be ready. We will be eating it, enjoying it. Today is the 23rd of the November 2015. And we have yet some tomatoes. And the last one, we have used. <laughs> And this is the Romford Flower Show. Flower and vegetable and fruit show. And the tomatoes of the 2014, which had in summer 2014, are continuing to provide us with uh, vitamin C, even into the 2015. Today is the 18th of January 2015. They yet giving us. Tomatoes. Probably after the um, potatoes, tomatoes are the most uh, widely cultivated crop in the allotments in the UK, all around the world if you have a garden. And um, there are so many varieties of tomatoes. It's difficult sometimes to really figure out what, what is good, what, to, uh, what you have to grow for one season to the next one. So, uh, every catalog climbs something. They say this variety has these merits, that variety has other merits. And uh, you get confused, uh, especially when you consider that there are so many disease-resistant claims. And uh, everybody says our tomato are disease-resistant. Practically, I think that is nonsense because tomatoes are not supposed to grow in a wet climate like what we have in England. In the United Kingdom. So it's a dry climate uh, or dryish climate uh, crop. What we can do is to learn about them, to protect them, and uh, choose the varieties that give the fruit before any of the any of the blight uh, falling upon them. For that we have to know about different varieties, when they grow, when you have to sow them, when you have to harvest them, or if you have to take them when they are green, what's the variety for that? There are several books about it, to tomatoes specifically. I like books which are just about one kind of crop. And I have a few of these kind of books. And these are two books about tomatoes. This one is published in Britain by National Trust, famous trusted uh, publisher. They have a lot of properties around the UK. 
and this one is a uh, American book. Uh, the British one is uh, is quite uh, interesting. It has lots of history. First of all, it is written by Jane McMorland Hunter, Kitchen Garden Cooking Cook, or something like that. Let me see the yeah, Kitchen Garden Cookbook Tomatoes, and uh, it has. This chapter contains introduction, a brief history of tomatoes, tomatoes in the garden, tomatoes in the kitchen, National Trust Kitchen Gardens. That's very interesting if you want to visit. Tomato days, days you can go and see the different varieties of tomato, picture credits and index. This book is about roughly in the 100 pages, 96 pages, yes. And what is interesting is that it has a very good uh, history of the tomatoes. Uh, GM tomatoes, for example, uh, this is the latest one. Uh, practically, uh, hmm, I'm not easy. That's uh, if they have a tomato which is crossed between a real tomato and some uh, animal genes for because of some some merits. We don't know much about these things. You may end up in 40, 40 years time being told that oh, we are sorry, this has this uh, side effects. We didn't know about it by then. Who you can sue? Who you can follow on that? Nobody. Nobody uh, uh, can be responsive. Anyway, what is interesting in this book is about all the tomato varieties and uh, how to water them. Even some uh, little uh, cooking guide at the end. What I like is the tomato varieties, beef steak tomato, globe tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. One of the best tomatoes that I've ever grown is sun gold. Let us see if it is mentioned here, sun gold. Sun gold is a very sweet tomato. It's almost a smallish to the medium size. It's a kind of a orange colored. It's very sweet in that sense. And uh, yeah, I like that because I've grown it. It's very good. Sun gold F1. That's a hybrid. Uh, it was originally bred in Japan. So I didn't know that. Yeah, something new. And then it can crop over a long period. That's Perfectly true. Look at this. I have this tomato sun gold. It is now 23rd of January 2015. And this was harvested and brought here in the, uh, yeah, September 2014. And yet it is yet here. I have some of this yet left. We are eating them as, as, as we go ahead. So, uh, this is a British book, and this is good because it has all the familiar names. This book is uh, published in America. It's, well, uh, the full title is your, You Bet Your Garden Guide to Growing Great Tomatoes. This is kind of radio show talk, You Bet Your Garden. This kind of trademark, registered trademark. Growing Great Tomatoes by Mike McGarth. McGrath. Uh, host of Public Radio's You Bet Your Garden, former editor of Organic Gardening Magazine. The subtitle is How to Grow Great Tasting Tomatoes in Any Backyard Garden or Container. By the way, I forgot to tell you, the publication date of this uh, English book, British book, is uh, 2011. And the price originally is £8.99, almost. And uh, what it was reduced to 99 pence. And I bought it in the works bookshop. They sell very good books at very good prices, but you must be an alert when they come, because they come and go easily. This other book uh, is published in the... I bought it in the Foil, London, Charing Cross Road. It's published by Fox Chapel Publishing, and it was priced at £9.99. Of course. That's almost £10. It has these following chapters. Um... The date of publication is uh, 2012, one year after that other book. Let me see. Okay, cont contents. Introduction. Why I'm doing this instead of enjoying my summer. You see the kind of jokey language that he uses. Chapter 1, picking your tomatoes. Chapter 2, the joy of germination. Chapter 3, the art of tomato planting. Staking and caging. Food, water, and basic keeping, keeping alive skills. Pest control. Dealing with disease. The Harvest and Beyond, Coolest Stuff Sources and Index. Um, okay, uh, 
this is a book which mostly is a uh, I think you easily could cut half of the material here and just go to the substance which is actually the, what, what you're after the book is a little bit too much wordy sometimes I feel and but when it comes to having some index about tomatoes that's that's great look uh, of course there are some varieties that we don't grow here Arkansas, Arkansas traveler celebrity never heard of this or they call for example the the black Russian, they call it black cream. Different namings, they don't like Russians, probably they don't. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Uh, yeah, stew pies, I've grown it last year, was was good. And uh, some of the old varieties that you remember, Sun Gold, for example, hybrids. That's what I like here, it's written uh, 57 days to maturity. Comments, early yellow, orange, sweetie, unique, mild, tropical, citrus, Citrusy flavor. That's kind of true. I felt that is more like plum, but anyway, citrusy, you can imagine. The Joy of Germination. I like this book. It's a bit too much wordy when it comes to words and uh, being jokey and talking to too much, writing too much, practically. Uh, I feel that is a little wasteful, but if you have the time to read it over a cold winter night, that's your choice. You can enjoy this. Uh, basically, this is, most of it is words. The, f the, the part that I really like is the, is the varieties that I've mentioned. And, uh, yeah. It's a bit too long, but anyway, that, that's, that can be seen as relevant sometimes, but some part of it is just because it was a, based on a radio talk show, is uh, sometimes getting irrelevant. This is the gentleman who have written the book, Mike McGrath, is a kind of, Scottish origin, probably from, yes, uh, from UK originally 200 years ago or whatever, uh, the people who migrated there. And, uh, and yes, yeah, some good pictures. It's a specific book, some cartoons, as you see, and uh, ideas. If it was me, I would buy this book first, then I would buy also this book. Because simply because this is mostly related to what we have in the UK, that is also good. And if you want to have it, go and get it. They are almost similar priced. If you get it under uh, under original uh, pricing, and that's it. These two books are what I recommend. So you can choose the varieties that you like. Of course, any catalog that you get, they have some guides. At the level of this, you get them for free. These books have something more than those catalogs that the Catholics don't have history and uh, anecdotes and stories and uh, growing guides and uh, how to how to guide and how to protect, how to even cooking, some, some cooking advice. So guide about planting and sowing your tomatoes. We are near the season, you can start to decide what kind of seeds you want for this year and you can start sowing and growing. Spring is upon us.